In this video, we're going to take a look at the history of the atom. And so by the end of this video, you're going to be able to describe how the idea of an atom has changed in Western science, as well as be able to describe the features of the atom according to each theory. And so we're going to take a look at Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr, and quickly talk about the quantum mechanical model. We're going to start with Dalton's atomic theory because this is really the groundbreaking theory that helps us understand and know everything we know about atoms to date. So he actually came up with four sort of key pieces to his theory. The first of which is that all matter is made up of small, indivisible particles called atoms. All atoms of an element are identical in properties such as size and mass. Atoms of different elements have different properties. And atoms of different elements can combine in specific ways to form new substances. And so from these four pieces to his atomic theory, he came up with this table of elements. Uh, this was in from 1808 that show some of the different elements that he thought existed as atoms and what they look like, which essentially his model of the atom was just this big ball here, um, which is kind of termed the billiard ball model. Next in our timeline is the work from J.J. Thompson. And so he did some experiments. We're not going to go into the details of what the experiments were, but the result of his work showed the existence of electrons. And so he's added the concept of electrons to our understanding of the atomic model. So what he sort of suggested here is that an atom is mostly positively charged space. Okay, so everything colored in blue there is positively charged. And then we have these little bits or uh, of a negative charge, which are our electrons. And so he was a British scientist, and so he named his model, the raisin pudding or plum pudding model. It's mostly known as the plum pudding model. Now, if you're not familiar with what plum pudding is, it's actually a very popular dessert still to this day in England. Um, but you can kind of picture this as maybe like a chocolate chip cookie or a blueberry muffin, where all of the dough is the positively charged space in an atom and then the chocolate chips or the blueberries are the electrons that are distributed throughout the cookie or the muffin. After Thompson came the work of Rutherford, Ernest Rutherford, and he did a pretty pivotal experiment where he took this very thin layer of gold foil. So this is our gold foil here. And you can kind of think of it like tin foil or aluminum foil. It's a very, very thin sheet of gold. And he bombarded it and put it in this system here where he shot out alpha particles from our machine here. And so what he thought is if the plum pudding model of the atom was correct, then those alpha particles should just go straight through the gold foil because everything is generally fairly light in size and so it should just shoot straight through. Now, these alpha particles are positively charged, so that's something to keep in mind. And when he did this experiment, what he saw was that most of the time they did go straight through, but sometimes if he shot it through, it actually went off on a bit of an angle. Or sometimes when he shot them straight at it, it actually deflected back and hit the back of the material instead. So this was a big surprise. So what does this mean? Well, we need to look at the gold foil kind of like from a top-down view here. 
and the gold foil is so thin that it's only maybe a couple of atoms thick. And from his experiment, what he came up with, his hypothesis, is that atoms had these small, tiny, little, hard, dense centers that were positively charged, and the rest of it was mostly empty space. And so if we're shooting an alpha particle, you can see if it's mostly empty space, it's just going to go straight through. And we can do that in many places on our diagram. But sometimes when you shoot them, they hit these small dense little circles in the center of our nucleus and they either reflect off at an angle or they might actually deflect backwards. And so this reflection or deflection indicates that there are these small hard pieces inside the atom and since the alpha particles are positively charged then his assumption and his hypothesis were, was that these small hard dense areas inside the atom were also positively charged and that's why we're getting them either going off on angles or being deflected because like charges repel each other. And so this is the beginning of the idea of the nucleus. So Rutherford's model, if we kind of summarize what he found with his gold foil experiment, is he came up with the idea of a nucleus. And the nucleus is small, dense, and has a positive charge. And then the electrons occupy the space around the nucleus. Uh, the electron cloud itself is big, it's mostly empty space, and it has a negative charge. And while the Rutherford model did explain the results of the gold foil experiment, it didn't explain everything. And that's where the work of Niels Bohr comes along. Niels Bohr was actually a graduate student of Rutherford's and worked with Rutherford and took this model a step further. And some of the important experiments he did, which again, we're not gonna talk about in this video, but the work he did found that electrons can have very different amounts of energy. And so this work suggested that electrons are actually found not just anywhere around the nucleus, but they're found within specific orbits that are at specific distances away from the nucleus. And so he called these orbits or energy levels and he numbered them from one being the one that's closest to the nucleus, followed by two, followed by three, and so on. And so we have our positively charged nucleus, and then we have our electrons in very specific orbits or energy levels. So this is the model that we're gonna work with in this course, but I think it's really important to address and for you to understand that this model is still not complete. It doesn't fully explain all of the observations that we know to date about the atom. And in fact, the Bohr model is really only good at explaining observations about hydrogen and hydrogen alone. It actually doesn't explain some of the observations we see that involve heavier elements. And so in later chemistry courses, if you take grade 12 chemistry, you're actually going to learn about the quantum mechanical model. And this model of the atom is our current understanding of what the atom looks like. So stay tuned for grade 12 chemistry. This is where it starts to get kind of fun, a little complicated, but um, it's, it's really neat because we use quantum mechanics to explain our current understanding of the atom. That's it for this video then. Let's move on to our next task.